Hey there guys, I'm Alec Markson, seed representative here in central Minnesota. I'm here with Mike Blaine, our regional agronomist at our Gibbon PFR site. And it is April 27th, and guys have really been making some good planning progress over the last week or so, although it seems to have been put to a little bit of a halt with mm -hmm. a little bit of the rainfall recently and things. Um, we're in kind of a unique situation this year where we have some guys that have made tons of progress that are getting close to if not completed, and some guys that haven't even turned a wheel yet out in the field. Mike, is that similar to what you're seeing no. out in your area? No, absolutely. You're right on. I was just thinking this morning, uh, thinking ahead to the coming week, we, uh, spring 21 is uh, more or less a tale of two seasons already, and it's only April 27th. We have growers, as you mentioned, uh, fairly medium to large operations that are done with corn and soybeans, and then you can drive three to five miles away and growers are just getting a start. But, and it really comes down to like, you're, you know, you have to stop and think it's rain showers, rain patterns this year are probably more typical what we're used to. You know, we've just seen so many years or so many springs in previous years where if uh, one person gets rain, everybody gets rain. And so that that's uh, where we're at. I think the other thing is looking at uh, from a Minnesota crop progress update, uh, you, you mentioned it's April 27th and, you know, it's relative to those growers that are giving updates. We're right on track to our five-year average, taking the earlier last year and the, uh, some of the wetter years before that. Sure. Yeah, so as guys continue moving forward in the planting season, what are some things that you think they should be taking into consideration, whether it be corn, soybeans, um, planting depth, a anything special that as we as we move into May and things that guys are seeing? Sure, I, I think a couple of things you, uh, you brought up when we were out looking at uh, one of the early planting dates here at the uh, Minnesota uh, PFR location at Gibbon is really looking at whatever is a good practice um, you would want to employ on April 10th is still a good practice on April 27th and uh, that, in, that includes uh, including your uh, starter pop-up fertilizer, your biologicals, your nutrients, uh, if you have the flexibility to put uh, additional uh, nutrients on in a two by two or two by two format. Uh, I know visiting, uh, you and I were visiting with Nate Furley, our regional agronomy manager here for the Midwest. And we were talking about, you know, we've had very low mineralization uh, and mineralization from uh, good bugs, active bugs, and they're driven as much by uh, moisture, but as, as for sure by soil temperature. And so having, uh, some level of additional nutrients available for that uh, planted seed. And we can see in most of our soils across uh, this region, both uh, some level of nitrogen and sulfur would be, would be key, key component. So even though growers may think that they're planning, gonna be planting later than they did last year, we're still in that optimal uh, planting window. Uh, the data shows, you know, we, we can take advantage of early planted soybeans and early planted corn, but you know, eight years out of ten if we can plant from April 25th to May 5th um, you know we're, we're in that optimum window. So. Yeah and it was interesting to see as we were digging up some seeds and things here in that planting date study here in Gibbon is that some we have many growers that are kind of in that same situation right now looking at, at that planting date and everything as well seeing that April 6th where some guys were able to get some corn and soybeans in the ground versus what a lot of people got done last week, that, that, that difference in the seed development and everything currently. Yeah, and I, I think you mentioned as well, you're familiar with some of your own acres that are uh, GDUs, it's, if you want to call it temperature, uh, that drives uh, seed germinate, you know, seed germination emergence. You know, we, we had some GDUs in the soil back the first week of April, if we can think back to the Easter time frame that week when uh, reached some 60s and 70s and then since then you know for sure after you know, the 15th of the month we it's been difficult to get a 50 degree day and so we look at that, that differential and planning date and uh, or April 22nd and whatever or the 20th you pick a day corner beans it's it's sitting nice and solid and cool and that's for most growers even though we've had some rain showers that have impeded planting uh, we, we haven't had the saturating soil conditions, which with the cold tend to be that, that setback. And so we, you know, the a common question is uh, we've talked about and talked about with others is that uh, it's been cold, my seed isn't doing anything. Well, that's okay today, right? Uh, as long as we, we, we're going to be cool, we want to be dry. But, uh, you know, today, April 27th, uh, 
The forecast has been a little bit sporadic because some of the strong fronts and storms or jet streams and things that we've been moving, but it does look like looking ahead the next week to 10 days, we're gonna have warmer temps and uh, you know very conducive to, we have to say today, for the seed that was planted and planted right uh, the first time, um, you know, our opportunity for you know, acceptable stands is still there. So Mike, with these cool temps that we've been encountering and things lately here, what would you say for growers moving forward with some of that lack of mineralization, what that could mean for some of their in-season nutrient needs? Well, it, it's probably, is there gonna be more? Not necessarily, but the, the timeliness and availability of having it there earlier is gonna be more critical. And, uh, you know, again, the, if you have the ability to use a pop-up and uh, well, the, we've talked both uh, carbohydrates and biologicals, having uh, those there with the seed and that seedling getting them to V2 is critical. And so when you, you know, you ask the question, is it gonna be more? Not necessarily, but if a grower, from a standpoint, if he typically plants, you know, the latter part of April, and uh, he's just using a pop-up starter and then counting on you know, V6 to V8, 10 later side dress, uh, you, you may need to think about it because when we're planting today, we've had such a low mineralization to have available nutrients uh, to bring us to this point. Is that, is that you know, that is a lot of words yeah. make sense, but the reality is so, g given that choice uh, to put additional nutrients on early, and we, we mentioned earlier, both the, the nitrogen and uh, sulfur because those very heavily rely on uh, mineralization or good bugs, good bacteria to move them from an uh, unavailable state to an available state. Those, those would be the two critical ones. And that's, you know, the value when we, we pack, look back the 2017 to 2019 when we had extremely wet springs, uh, not necessarily maybe as cold, but having those available in a two by two or two by two placement really, really you know, became the separator between uh, uh, very good yields and good yields. It'll be really, really interesting to watch some of the studies here, right? The, the PFR yep. site, to watch some of those biologicals in both corn and soybeans like you had touched on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like we visited, we started out, you know, there's a, one of the key things from a planting date study is, uh, you know, do you, hopefully most years we're not gonna be, our target is gonna be April 6th, but again, this year to represent, because there was a number of acres being planted April 6th, what does the data show us? You know, it's gonna show us what in 2021, what corn yields and soybean yields specifically, but also here at this site, uh, you know, one of the key things Vex looks at is from a management standpoint, what can we do forward? So I planted April 6th, what is my opportunity and need for uh, foliar nutrients uh, or fungicide, and is my timing the same? as if I would have planted May 1st. And so the only way you can really differentiate is over multiple years, besides looking at the products, it's really you know, looking at the combination of the timing. Uh, you know, it, uh, it's one of the key com uh, practice projects I'm looking at through the growing season. We'll have the opportunity to talk uh, further this summer, and especially at our, our PFR day coming up on August 18th. That's correct. Yeah, thank you. I got the date right. Uh, to really, you know, really talk about it, you know, we, we haven't seen yields and we haven't seen, you know, that true finish of the, of the growing season, but what has the 2021 shows? And, you know, for that reason, as most growers that have looked at any of the VEX PFR data, you know, you, you need to look at, at three years and some, some products, if you got a, a gap year, you may need to look at it in a fourth or fifth year to have that confidence and reliability. And, you know, if you would have asked me, four weeks ago I said this is going to be a normal spring right well yeah or maybe I was wishing for a normal spring right where we plant yeah we do our, our post planning management we move on so yeah well thank you Mike and I look forward to hopefully seeing everyone here in Gibbon on August 18th for our PFR day and hope everyone has a safe and successful planting season